one channel won't get the results that Facebook or Yelp or Dropbox got, but what they will do is they'll get you something. So if you take an omni-channel approach and leverage all of them and repurpose your content, you can do quite well. You just gotta be patient and give it time. Welcome back to Office Hours. I'm David Meltzer, and I am so excited because every once in a while, it's good to feel old. And this next guest makes me feel very old because I've known him of him since he was 16. He's been a mentee from a close and afar over the years. He's been honored by the president, entrepreneur, Forbes. He's the top of all top entrepreneurs. Neil Patel, welcome to Office Hours. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, you know, I always say I bet on the jockey. And you and a another mentee of mine uh, now are all grown up. And there's probably no better feeling in the world to have known that not only have you planted seeds, and usually we plant seeds under trees we never get to sit under, but it's so nice to be able to sit under the shade and the shadow of such great people like Neil Patel. Um, I knew you were going to be successful the first time I met you. I know the first thing we did was with the Pro Football Hall of Fame uh, yeah. here in Las Vegas. I'm not sure you could even drink at the time. You weren't old enough. Um, <laughs> And yet, as a New York Times bestselling author, speaker, consultant to the biggest and brightest, you are paving the way for so many people. What do you think it was about your personality at such a young age that attracted not just me, but all of the genre of entrepreneurs that I surrounded myself with, what I considered to be the spirit of excellence from Hall of Famers, billionaires, and entrepreneurs who, the minute they met Neil Patel, would tell me, oh my God, that kid's gonna be so successful. What do you think it was at a young age inside of you that attracted people uh, like me and my friends? So I think it was two main things. The first is being helpful. A lot of people wanna network with others, get to know them, but all they're looking for is what can they do for me instead of how can I help these other people and not worrying about if they're gonna do anything for you in exchange. Just help, give away a lot of goodwill, and don't think about what you're gonna get in exchange and you'll, in the long run, it all pays off, it's karma. The second thing is just being transparent and open. So a lot of people, when they're starting off, they're like, oh, I'm really good at this and I'm so successful, I made all this money and look at these cars I have and these homes. Well, if you're so successful, people aren't gonna help you because you don't need help. If you're transparent, you tell them your struggles, your successes, we're having issues and you tell them all about the ups and the downs, because that's common, it's normal. Entrepreneurship is like a roller coaster people are more likely to A, relate to you, and B, help you. Neil, I want to talk to the 16-year-old yeah. that started his first website, Advice Monkey. You know, there's a lot of young adults that I'm sure look up to you, but in today's space, there's a lot of information out there, especially for young adults. Do I go to college? Uh, do I build my own company? Do I work for a corporation? Do I become an influencer? When you were 16, what's the best advice that you can give anyone today? Because it's changed drastically in the last change decade. Change a lot, yeah. So that they can find their path or just feel good about where they're going. The best thing you do is you're 16, you can go learn a lot from YouTube or websites or blogs. You can go to college if you want. College isn't gonna teach you as much as you may think. If you wanna be a doctor, I get it, you have to. But go out there and learn. But the bigger thing is, it's not just about learning, whether it's events and online, it's actually about doing. So take some tidbits of information that you're learning and gathering, and then just go and execute. And you'll quickly figure out if it works or it doesn't work. When you're 16 or even 17 or 18 or 24, what you'll find is things don't go the way you want. You don't make as money as quick as you want. You don't get the traction as quick as you want. But you're young. You have all the time in the world. You probably aren't married. You probably don't have all these responsibilities. So what you should do is just go and execute on what you're learning on. You'll make mistakes, learn from your mistakes, and avoid making the same one over and over again. And eventually, it'll lead you down a path on what you should be doing, and that'll get you to where you want. Thanks for coming on, Neil. Um, you know, I really appreciate your story because I've hired and fired so many marketing companies and really have had to learn marketing in my own business. And I really look at my business as like a marketing company. I think almost all businesses are really marketing companies. I've had to learn SEO and have spent so much time figuring stuff out and, and sort of putting content out on the internet um, you know, years and years ago. And we drive a lot of you know, traffic to our website now because of it. But my question is, is you know, it's changing constantly. Yeah. Google's making updates. You know, people say SEO is dead. I don't, I don't believe it is. What would you tell you know, entrepreneurs or people in their business? Like, where do they need to be thinking about right now 
where are things going? Because all this stuff is changing. Social media has changed it. Um, you know, just dropping content on there, it's keyword friendly, it doesn't yeah. work anymore. So what do you have to be thinking about, not only for today to get movement in your business from a marketing perspective, especially SEO? So here's a quick stat. Google makes, on average, over nine algorithm updates per day. Wow. Not per week, not per year, per day. So when you think about that stat, Facebook's making a lot of algorithm changes. Instagram is, TikTok is, LinkedIn is, it, all these platforms are. None of these channels are really dead. What you'll find is they're harder than they were before because once other people find that a channel works really well, you start getting a lot more competition people investing in it. So it takes longer to get results and you have to end up spending more time and money on it. Where the market's going, whether it's for SEO or any platforms, is, is first off, it's omni-channel. You can't build a business off of one marketing channel anymore. If you think about Yelp, Yelp grew largely through SEO. If you think about Facebook, they grew largely through the email invite flow. Your friend invited you to join Facebook. If you look at Dropbox, they grew through the social platforms like Twitter. Tweet and get more space. Yep. So these days, one channel won't get the results that Facebook or Yelp or Dropbox got. But what they will do is look at you something. So if you take an omni-channel approach and leverage all of them and repurpose your content, you can do quite well. You just got to be patient and give it time. In the next 24 months, and I see this more and more with the people that I mentor today, uh, is that they see marketing as an expense. Uh, mm, and, good question. And it's going to provide a huge opportunity for those people like you and like you reverse mentored me and taught me to make an investment in my community and everything else will take care of itself. There's going to be a separation. And those who take this investment approach are going to benefit exponentially comparatively to I see every day more and more people dropping out of the game because they see it as an expense. The expense keeps going up and they're not patient enough yep. to see the benefits of a community. Uh, most of the people here have built really nice communities, but they haven't experienced the next double. And the bigger you are, the next double is even bigger. How can we explain this variance between expense and investment and how important is the investment in the community today comparatively to 12 months ago? It's super important to invest in community. It's more important than ever. If you look at individuals, um, EX, the Kardashians, or LeBron James, and the list goes on and on, Oprah, Tony Robbins, brands can create massive companies in these days, billion plus dollar companies and that didn't exist before. And it's not because it's a personal brand or a corporate brand, it's because they have a community. So the more you invest, now, the better off you are because, as I mentioned earlier, with the algorithm updates, it's getting harder and it takes longer. So time is money. The quicker you do it, or the earlier you get started, the cheaper it's going to be. The second thing you need to think about is there's two aspects of marketing. One channel has a direct ROI. One group doesn't really have a direct ROI. So for example, if you're doing Google Paid Ads, you spend a dollar, you should make $2. Maybe not right then and there, but over the lifetime value of your customer, it should be ROI positive. The other aspect that's intangible, and this is the investing side that a lot of companies are resistant on, is branding. And you got to invest to build a brand. The last time I looked it up, which was a few months ago, over a million people a month on Google in the United States search for the term shoes. Over 7 million people a month are searching for the term uh, Nike each and every single month. Nike mainly sells shoes. Yes, they have a lot of other products. It shows you the power of branding. When you think about Cars like electric, you may think Tesla. It's not because you did a Google search, it's because of their brand. Same with credit cards, American Express, Visa, MasterCard. The list goes on for most industries. So you got to invest in a brand, whether it's creating good content, community, TV commercials, radio. It doesn't matter if you're not getting your brand out there, you're not going to win in the long run. It's amazing because when uh, you asked around the world, what you think of when you think of genius, over 99% of the people answered Einstein. My bet is in 100 years, they'll answer Patel. Thank you so much <laughs> joining us here. Neil Patel, my heart rings with joy and pride to have you here with me and my team.